reach level of customization, potential cross-play, and mod support coming to MCC. Stay tuned throughout the entire video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again giving you another gameplay commentary. Today we're talking some more news about the MCC coming to PC. Recently there was an Ask Me Anything on Reddit and all the questions were answered by Sketch on Reddit there. And so we're going to give you a quick TLDR on all the questions that were asked and answered. If you guys enjoy this news informational kind of video, please make sure to tap that like button as it lets me know you want to see some more content like this. Leave a comment down below with your thoughts on the responses and as well, make sure to stay up to date with anything happening on the channel and Halo. Make sure to tap subscribe with the bell because we all know sub feeds can be kind of weird at times. So let's get right into the video here. So we have four main topics to discuss. It's release and pricing, the PC experience, cross-platform and progression, as well as MCC updates. Now I'm sure you're probably all wondering, well, when is the release date of Halo Reach on the MCC? Because I'm certainly excited about it. I'm definitely going to be playing it and streaming it as well. So we're probably curious when that's going to come out. And right now, as 343 has stated before, but Sketch wrote in here saying, that's gonna come out when it's ready. And you know, a lot of people even tried getting ballpark answers from him on this AMA. And uh, he just wasn't gonna hold true to any kind of timetable on this. Understandably though, just because of how new this announcement is. And I'm sure once we get a few flights in for the MCC on PC, then we'll be able to understand when these are coming out to the PC as well as Reach coming to the MCC as well. Now, I'm sure you, many of you are probably wondering, Halo Insider player selection, like who's available for it? Well, 343 says that they're looking for pretty much anybody. Just looking to find ways to get as many people online as possible during these flight times for the most amount of data for 343 to take in and work with. As we know, the release date is in chronological order in Halo's universe, so starting out with Reach, they have CE, Halo 2, Halo 3, Halo 3 ODST, and then you have Halo 4. An interesting thing here is that on the PC, you'll be able to buy each game individually or at the end as a total package. But you cannot purchase all the games as a bundle before the release. So I'm hoping that 343 takes into consideration that a lot of people are going to be buying these as soon as they come out. And I feel kind of lame to be so advantageous to buy the Halo games as soon as they release on PC and then find out that they have like a bundle deal towards the end of the release schedule. If, it's, if each game is like 10 bucks, it's like whatever, sure. I'd, I'll, I'd gladly spend another $60 on MCC to play on PC again. And talk about pricing, no details of that right now. If the 343 and Microsoft are going to be like good guys, that they would want to make it so that each game individually totals probably up to $60. I couldn't imagine being any more than that. Now I'm sure you're a lot of you players who probably have a, at least a laptop or have been playing MCC on console are probably wondering, well, what are the requirements for the PC when it comes to playing these games? Well, each game is going to be different, and that's why they don't have any set recommendations at the moment. But they're going to be using the data from the flight programs to determine what are going to be the minimum and required specs, and the probably max specs as well if you're going to get into that when it comes to the MCC on PC. I would assume you wouldn't really need something too strong, as the newest game in the collection that's going to be Halo Reach was released back in 2010, and a lot has changed since 2010 when it comes to... PC performances. Now, if you want to be able to stream 4K 144 hertz and with all their bells and whistles included on, it might be a bit taxing on your system. But if you're just looking for 1080p, 60 FPS, you know, the golden standard when it comes to gaming, I think that the minimum bar of entry will be rather low. Now, a big thing for me is unlocked frame rates, as a lot of these console games or games are developed strictly for console. Or the engine is like strictly tied to the frame rate and so then you bump up to 60 it makes things kind of weird up to 120 things get even more weird I noticed with Skyrim when you have to actually manually unlock the 60 frame lock that's on there and if you go above that apparently things get kind of weird and I certainly have noticed that as well and I would expect something similar when it comes to Halo but we'll see if they are able to have uh, uncapped frame rates. That's the goal from 343, but they say it may vary from title to title. As I'm sure CE, you can probably run at super high frames, where possibly on Halo 4, maybe not so much, but again, we'll have to look into it. Now, interesting thing here is uh, asking whether the center of the crosshairs would be in the middle of your screen. Uh, as we do know, the classic Halos that the crosshair was actually placed a little bit below center of the screen, if you take a look at it. 
and for the time it worked out really well but i think when you move this over to pc it may feel kind of weird not having the center of your screen have the reticle uh, i do know that at least with the El Dorito mod, you're able to move your gun model around as much as you want. And 343 is working in hand with the El Dorito team to try to get this onto PC and give all the options and all the bells and whistles people want. And I would like to actually see the option and be able to have this crosshair centered on the screen. I believe it wasn't until Halo 5 is when the center screen reticle was placed and it might have been Halo 4 but I'm pretty sure it was Halo 5 the first game to actually have the crosshairs in the center of the screen. Now but big question for me too is crossplay. And there is a little bit of crossplay, but not kind of what you would expect. Or you can crossplay with people on the Windows Store and on the Steam version, but right now from PC, the console crossplay not happening at the moment, though 343 is investigating, actively looking into doing this, which I think would be absolutely huge. Now, I would assume this to happen when it comes to Halo Infinite, since you can already do it with many other first party titles for Microsoft as in Forza Horizon as, and Gears of War have crossplay on console and PC. So I'm pretty positive that Halo Infinite will have it, though I don't know if you'll be able to pull it off with the MCC since it was released before the Play Anywhere program, which also gets mentioned in here that it looks like since it's not, since MCC was previously released before the Play Anywhere program, they, if you have it on console, you may have to buy it again on PC. Again, 343 again states that they are looking into this to try to help out the players who have bought and played the game on console to get some kind of benefit to move over to PC as well. Now, this next part is actually really huge. It's mod support. As we do know, when it comes to PC, a lot of times uh, people have the ability to create more things on PC than you can on console. Since, since PC, it's much more modular for your experience. And a lot of times with bigger games, say as like Battlefield, probably Apex as well, or just any other big name games out there, that they don't really allow modding so much, because one, they fear that modding will take away from the DLC sales, and also give players the ability to possibly get into the system to hack. And so that's why a lot of times these bigger name games don't allow mod support. Though, 343 states here saying, working closely with the modding community to provide official mod support after launch. Launch priority is making the game feel right and security and anti-cheat as well. So first of all they do want to make sure the game just works how it's supposed to and you don't have any cheaters with it but they are open to the idea of mod support which is really huge because on Steam you have a workshop which is super simple you just click and you add it into your game no problem. You see this a lot with Skyrim and many other games on PC when it comes to Steam the workshop is a great place to just simply add mods into your game with no issues whatsoever so be able to have mod support with Halo on PC on top of Forge, oh my god, my, my imagination is going wild just thinking about that. And also with a standard feature when it comes to P games on PC is having like a dedicated server custom browser or like a server browser. And right now they can't commit to anything at the time right now, but they are part, as part of the discussion of bringing the game to PC. There's the next section, cross-platform and progression. So I'm going to read this exactly just so they kind of ease a little bit of confusion saying cross-progression. And yes, between MCC and PC version, Halo Reach progression on the 360, for example, will not carry over. Stats, achievements, forge maps, game variants will all carry over. Game saves will not. So again, if since you will have to link your Microsoft account to your Steam account, you're going to be playing on there, and those attack those achievements and things are tied to your Microsoft account that will carry over but things that were happened on strictly just the 360 not so much as i mentioned earlier xbox and pc crossplay says it's not currently committed to for launch but actively investigating which i think would be absolutely huge for the franchise to be able to do that now it kind of depends if they want to put a whole lot of effort to get this to work since i'm sure they're going to really be doing this for halo infinite i think the biggest goal right now is just to get the game on pc as mentioned also the Play Anywhere system where basically if you buy the game on PC or on Xbox you can also play the game on the other platform as well. So like I did with Gears of War, I buy it digitally on the Xbox and since I bought it with my Microsoft account I'm able to also download it on PC as well. 
With MCC, it was released before the Play Anywhere program was announced, and so right now you cannot do that. So it looks like you will have to buy the game again if you want to play it on PC. But they are investigating options for those who have purchased MCC on the Xbox. Now, a really cool feature that I think was hugely missing in the MCC that's going to be making it with Halo Reach is the mix and match customization for Halo Reach. And it's gonna be unlocked via in-game progression, not monetization, which is super great to hear. Now, people are also asking about Halo 3, since you're gonna be able to bring, be, have your armor customization like you could in Reach. Is that gonna be possible for Halo 3 now in MCC? Currently, no, but looks like this would be the best armor customization to have on the MCC and Halo Reach still is king when it comes to armor customization. Now, what about Halo Reach playlists? As we do know, there were plenty of unique playlists when it comes to Halo Reach, especially including Invasion. And so I'm sure a lot of people are assuming that Invasion is going to be on the MTC. I would love to see it happen, but it's a totally different kind of game mode, and I wonder how that would work with the matchmaking, especially with the match composer as well being put in the MCC. But right now they say that no specifics on playlists yet, but we'll look at the community feedback and input to make the experience better. But what I could assume that you'll most likely see like your standard free, probably your free for all maybe, and then probably like a Slayer, and then you have your like your King of the Hill, Capture the Flag, SWAT. Your standard game modes you see in every Halo will probably be in reach for you to play on the MCC. But when it comes to specific game modes, such as Invasion, that might be a little tricky, but I do hope it does come to the multiplayer side of things. 343 is also looking into having local split screen for the PC. Uh, teams are looking at it to see if it can be supported. I would love to see that happen, though it, no guarantees right now. If you guys remember those in-game terminals that don't really work too well on the MCC, I think still, if I remember correctly from the last time I tried it, if they're going to be on PC and uh, they, say, they just say more details to follow. Now I have left a link in the description down below to this AMA for the consolidated question and answer section. So if you guys want to read every little bit, you can look that up in the description right now. I just want to give you guys all the information that you need to know right now when it comes to the MCC coming to PC, Halo Reach coming to PC, the new customization that we're going to be getting for the Reach game as well. Leave in the comment section down below guys what your thoughts are on this video here. Are you willing to pay for the MCC once again when it comes to PC which it looks like it may be the truth when it comes to that? Me personally I have no issue behind that just because it takes so much time and effort to bring these games over to PC that I'm willing to help support these developers and Microsoft do this to show my gratitude for that and to give them a reason why they should continue to support the PC platform along with their Xbox platform as well. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to tap a like button as it greatly helps out the video and the channel. If you're new and want to stay up to date with anything Halo related or stay up to date with the channel, make sure to tap subscribe with the bell. If you guys are new or missed any content from me recently, check the vid videos on the screen right now. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.